Foundations are a critical part of a building structure. They serve numerous purposes. They bear the load of the building, its inhabitants, contents, snow and rain. They distribute these loads over a large area to prevent excessive settlement. They provide protection against natural forces like earthquakes, tornadoes and floods. Because they are embedded into the soil, they provide lateral stability and prevent buildings from sliding away. They resist decay from bugs and soil. They protect buildings from freeze-thaw cycles and the expansion and contraction of soil. They also provide a level surface to start constructing a building. Two popular types of foundations are pier and beam and slab foundations. In this video, we're going to look at how they're made, their upfront costs, long-term costs, protection from the elements, where they should be used, and whether one is better than the other. Let's start with pier and beam or post and beam foundations, the older construction method that is found on homes built before 1960. First, a series of holes are dug into the ground 5 to 10 feet apart. These holes must hit bedrock, which can be 4 feet below the surface or 50 feet. Large cardboard tubes are sunk into the soil. Plastic bases can be added to the bottom to increase the size and carrying capacity of the piers. This helps to ensure that the piers won't shift. Circular rebar cages are placed in the middle of the voids. These tubes must be perfectly straight and level. Next, the voids are filled with concrete and a base connection is embedded in the top of the pier. Beams are extended from one pier to another. These will support the joists and the flooring of the home. Usually, the crawl space underneath the beams is about 18 inches from the ground. This is where the home's plumbing and electrical components are located. There are several variations of pier and beam foundations. The piers can be made of precast concrete, brick, stone, or cedar wood which is resistant to rot and decay. The crawl space or the area under the building can be vented or unvented. Slab on grade or monolithic slab foundations are a newer construction method. The concrete slab sits directly on the ground. First, the surface is leveled and a perimeter form is created for the foundation. Four to six inches of gravel is spread inside. A layer of plastic sheathing is laid down to act as a moisture barrier. Engineered steel rebar reinforces the concrete foundation. Concrete is poured over the gravel and plastic sheathing and allowed to cure. A newer version of slab on grade foundation is a post-tension slab. Steel cables are laid out in a grid inside the formwork. After the slab has been cast, the cables are tightened which gives the foundation tensile strength. A type of monolithic slab is a floating slab foundation. In this method, the horizontal slab is not connected to the vertical foundation. It simply sits on the ground and can move above the frost line as a monolithic unit. It is used for garages, workshops, sheds and ADUs or additional dwelling units. Pier and beam and slab on grade foundations are mainly found in the southern parts of the US. Northern states have conditioned crawl spaces and foundations with basements. The reason slab on grade foundations are so popular nowadays is because it's easier to construct and has a lower upfront cost compared to pier and beam foundations. Soils in Texas can vary drastically. They can have a couple of inches of topsoil, three to four feet of clay before hitting rock, or they can have more than 50 feet of clay before hitting rock. The cost of pier and beam foundations is unpredictable because of the different depths of clay soil. The cost of slab on grade foundations is more predictable because it doesn't need to hit bedrock. But the lower upfront costs of slab foundations means higher long-term costs, like foundation repair. Pier and beam foundations have individual piers and beam members, so it's easier to isolate foundation problems and it's cheaper to repair. Slab on grade foundations can shrink, crack and even sink. They are more difficult and expensive to repair. We had to install 22 concrete piers to level the foundation of our previous home. Fortunately, they only needed to be installed on the perimeter and not inside our home. Concrete slabs are in constant contact with the soil. Texas has clayey soils that expand and contract throughout the year because of moisture fluctuations. If soils swell, the foundation will be pushed upwards. If the soil shrinks and separates from the foundation, it will be unsupported and will crack. Foundation repair is a huge business here because every home has either had foundation repairs or will need it in the future. Homeowners are encouraged to water the soils around their foundation to balance the moisture levels throughout the year. 
Repairing electrical and plumbing issues is also easier and cheaper when you have a parent beam foundation, thanks to the crawl space underneath. With a slab foundation, repairing any electrical or plumbing issues is a messy and destructive and expensive process. You have to jackhammer the slab and cut the steel rebar to access any pipes. The lifespan of the concrete slab is lowered to get to the utilities underneath. We discussed this in my video on planned obsolescence, I'll link it up here. Also, any foundation work on post-tension slabs is very dangerous. People have been dismembered and killed because they hit a cable which then burst through the concrete. I've heard plumbers compare cutting through post-tension slabs to diffusing a bomb. Another feature to consider is the ability to add levels of stories to your home. You could technically add additional piers and beams to support another level. You could also detach your pier and beam home from the foundation and move it to a completely different site. Last year, a 140-year-old historic Victorian house was moved on dollies through the streets of San Francisco. Moving it just six blocks from Franklin Street to Fulton Street cost a whopping $400,000. This is possible with pier and beam foundations because they are detachable. Houses built on slab foundations are anchored down and cannot be moved. Before we move on to other differences between pier and beam and slab foundations, I'd like to introduce the sponsor of this portion of the video, Skillshare. I stepped away from my architecture and drafting job because I felt stifled. I wanted to learn something new every day. Skillshare is an online learning community that helps me do just that. It has thousands of classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. From photography and illustration to woodworking, storytelling and more, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. I recently took MKBHD's class on YouTube success. Even though the subject matter of his videos is different than mine, he had a lot of invaluable lessons. If you'd like to check this out, the first thousand people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Now let's compare how pier and beam and slab foundations protect us from the elements. Unvented pier and beam foundations can be insulated with fiberglass or spray foam. This can help lower your energy bills and make your home feel more comfortable. Vented pier and beam foundations are a different issue. The floors of such homes can be cold in winter months because of the air exchange that occurs in the crawl space. These spaces can also become damp and even accumulate water during heavy rains. Slab on grade foundations don't have this problem. However, if you don't use a vapor barrier underneath, moisture from the ground can seep through the concrete. Pests and rodents often seek shelter in crawl spaces and can build nests beneath your home. They can also cause damage to your wiring and structural members. Larger pests can be kept out of the crawl space by placing a lattice over the access. Slab on grade foundations don't have this issue, but termites could enter through any cracks or openings. In terms of comfort, flows on pier and beam foundations sound hollow and squeaky, but they are easier on your feet because they can flex. Concrete slab foundations are solid and quiet, but standing on them all day long can be tough on your feet. Finally, where to use them? Pier and beam foundations are better in areas with substantial soil expansion and contraction, like Texas. They are also ideal for homes built on uneven grade, homes built into a hillside, or for homes built off the ground due to potential flooding. Slab foundations are ideal for level sites, in regions that get a lot of moisture, and areas where freezing weather is common in winter. Underground pipes are insulated by the foundation and earth and are less likely to burst. Slabs are also easier to build and require less expertise. Both pier and beam and slab on grade foundations have their advantages and disadvantages. I wouldn't make a blanket statement saying that one is better than the other because there are so many factors to consider. Your site, budget, soil conditions, weather, etc. We should probably use pier and beam foundations here in Texas, but it can be too expensive in certain areas. Slab on grain foundations that are built on stable soil could last decades without any issues. I'd like to end this video with a story that a foundation repair guy told me last year. He said that with old slab foundations, if the end breaks off, it can be picked up with concrete piers, like the work that was done on my previous home. However, with new post-tension slabs, the ends don't break off. The whole slab and the house tilts. 
So he said that when newer homes get foundation repairs in a decade or so, they will have to pay four times more and need invasive interior peers. That's something to look forward to. I hope I was able to simplify these topics. Let me know if I should make additional videos on helical peers, friction peers for skyscrapers, and even basement foundations in northern regions. I'll link my Patreon page in the description. If you can support me, I'd really appreciate it. A big thank you to everyone already supporting me. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell too. Thanks for watching. See ya.